Diggs and the Phillies' Eddie Butler will be on the mound tonight for Colorado. Well, those frigid temperatures continue in Denver. It's 40 degrees right now here at Coors Field. Should be another cool evening. And as I send it to Drew and Jeff, my only question is, where is summer? <laughs> or spring. I don't know where summer is. Or anything. I don't know but where this is even winter fall. again. This I, is it's winter. I don't know where summer is, but I know where your husband is. Oh. He, he's behind <laughs> us practicing stats for Sunday. Excellent. Tell he's, him hello. He's filling in for Dougie. Jenny says hello. That was Steve. a lot of information. <laughs> there you go. You're right, Jenny. It's very cold. That's a very accurate weather report. Hey, the Rockies made a move today. It, it's not a surprise. Drew Stubbs has really been struggling. That's, that's an obvious one. He struck out 31 times and 51 at bats. He was optioned. He had to give approval. Yes. He was optioned down to Colorado Springs. And I know a lot of veteran players, of which you were uh, one at one point, appreciate that he is willing to do that to try to get straightened out. Yeah, and, and folks, if you're wondering why he had to give approval, because at, at, once you reach five years of Major League Service time, you have to give your approval if they want to try to option you, even though you have options left. And so Drew and the organization decided this is the best course of action to get him right, to get him back up there. And Drew, rightfully so, in my opinion, took that option and said, I need to go down and work on some things. Because, you know, as you said, 31 strikeouts and 51 at-bats is not going to do it. I look at what he did last year, and, and I don't think it's a case where, man, he just fell so hard so fast. There's something going on, whether it's mechanical or now it might be a little bit mental. He needs to get back on track to help this organization. And the guy they brought up is a guy that's got a lot of big league experience. The Rockies know him well. You fans know him well. Brandon Barnes, he's a high-energy guy. He's got a lot of ability. So Brandon Barnes is up with the club and part of their 25-man roster right now. Rockies won last night on the Nick Huntley eighth-inning home run. They'll look to make it two straight tonight. Rigid temperatures, but the Rockies getting ready against the Phils. Come on back to Coors Field with us. Jenny said a moment ago it's 40 degrees at Coors Field as the Rockies get set to take on the Phils. Game three of this four-game series. Rockies will head to Philadelphia in a little more than a week to see Citizens Bank Park. All right, today it's 40 degrees. It's May the 20th. January 20th, how warm was it? 49 degrees. February 20th, 52 degrees. March 20th, 65 degrees. 
and a month ago it was 56 degrees. We're going the wrong direction, Dewey. What's going on? <laughs> well, there was a couple days in January, too. I looked up, it was 71, 72. You, you and I were talking about it. We were sitting out on our back porch. And it was hot. It was hot. Those we were in shorts. <laughs> yeah. Go figure. Oh, my goodness. Eddie Butler making the leap onto Coors Field. And Butler will have the baseball this evening as the Rockies will try to build on that 6-5 victory last night to end a six-game home losing streak. Here's the lineup for Philadelphia. Ben Revere once again will be atop. The lineup is put together by Ryan Sandberg. It's brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. Freddie Galvis, who's the highest hitting shortstop in the National League at 336. Chase Utley back in the three spot. Ryan Howard at 244, but he's uh, been hot the last two weeks. Michael Franco's been impressive. He's hit 500 in the series. Jeff Francourt gets a start in right field for Grady Sizemore. Odubel Herrera will be in center. Carlos Ruiz and Severino Gonzalez on the hill, a 22-year-old from Panama. Some more on the numbers. Eddie making his eighth start of the year, and strike one is so important for all of uh, the Rockies pitchers, but particularly for Butler. Because of his stuff. When it, when he's ahead in the count, his stuff really plays with that hard sinking fastball and the changeup. You see too many walks in the innings pitched for Eddie. In April, in 22 innings, he had 13 walks. In May, in 12 innings, he had 10 walks. But I guarantee you one thing. He's glad he's he's kind of gotten out of the National League West because he's made nine starts against the National League West, one against the NL Central. That was earlier this year against Cincinnati. So obviously this is the first time he's seen a National League East team here at Coors Field or out on the road. And I know that may sound like, well, what's the big deal? We were talking to Larry Boa earlier today, and, and Larry's, you know, he's one of the really – baseball greats in that he was a really solid player he's been in the game forever he studies it researches it even learning bullpens outside your division you don't see the guys as much so you're not as familiar with the arms we were talking about some of the guys in the NL West and he wasn't as familiar with it and this guy studies the sport as well as anybody <laughs> it's a crash course almost and what you have to do when the Rockies play the Dodgers or the Giants or the Padres we kind of know them almost as much as we know Colorado sure you, you see them so much so here we go. Uh, Nolan waited till about the seventh <laughs> inning to put that on last night. I think Willeen told us before the game he's putting it on early. Willeen has it on. You needed it during batting practice. First pitch of the ball game misses ball one There's on her fear. willeen has got it on. He's got it all the way pulled up. He told us he was going to do it. There's a strike one and one on Revere. Pitch may have been uh, a little yeah. outside as well. Bob Davidson behind home plate. And the 1-1 one, one is down low. 2-1. I think sometimes with Eddie, especially early in his career here, they're trying to be a little too fine with his pitches. Maybe set up more over the center part of the plate and let just the natural action of the ball take over. You know what that reminds me of, what your statement? I remember when Jamie Wright, who ended up pitching close to 20 years in the big leagues, did Jamie finally go home? He got released I in spring think training. This was his final. Yeah, I haven't heard that he got picked up by anybody. But Jamie played forever. Oh. When he first came up, he had such great movement on that sinker, but he had trouble commanding. And they said, they told the catcher, set up in the middle of the plate, let the movement take care of itself. That was a good sinker. Here comes Troy on the move, one out. Rather than try to hit edges, when you have that kind of movement, Stay centered. Stay centered. Stay centered, and the ball will take it to a corner. Freddie Galvis will be next. And behind the redhead tonight, Ben Paulson is getting a start in left field. He played some there in AAA at Albuquerque this year. Charlie Blackman is going to help him out. He's in center field. Cargo's in right. And then it's Arenado Tulowitzki, LeMahe Rosario with Nick Hundley, star from last night, doing the catching. Nick drove in a couple of runs last night. He had that big two out home run in the eighth inning to break up a 5 5 tie. 1 0 on Galvis. And that's a little bit off the plate, 2 0. See, Chuck Nasty <laughs> does have a natural. He doesn't have face to worry. About, but what about his ears? They're going to get cold. That's Way why outside. Nolan and Willene have their. 
scarf or whatever you want to call it to protect their neck and their ears. I've repeated this. <laughs> I've re yeah. <laughs> I've, just don't cover your eyes. You got to be able to see the baseball. Tulo's got it on. He just he has it around his neck right now. He said this. Uh, I probably said it on the air last night. Forgive me for repeating myself. Lived in Colorado around 30 years now. I've never seen uh, a stretch like the last few weeks. Been here for 19 years and going to school out here since 1983. I would agree. I, I I don't remember it where it just seemed like and I played in Seattle. This is what it was like in Seattle every day for about two and a half, three months before the summertime came. Three two on Galvis and that is in the air to center field and grabbed by Blackman two outs. A good job by Eddie coming all the way back from a 3-0 count. And with two outs and nobody on, Chase Utley will come up. Rockies fans, you can join the conversation. Send us your thoughts, photos via Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. Use the hashtag Toyota Talk. We'll show many of those thoughts and pictures as we can during Toyota Talk throughout the ballgame. Utley was hitting 099 on May the 8th. He's picked it up a little bit since then. He's hit into some hard luck also. There's a strike at the knees on Utley. I'll move back up into the third spot in the lineup tonight. He had been hitting six in the first two games. This is where you're used to seeing Chase Utley in front of Ryan Howard. It's a strike as well, 0-2. Check this out of the 14 players taken before Utley in the 2000 draft. This is how inexact the science the draft is, particularly in baseball, because you're drafting some high school guys, college guys, junior college guys. Here's the 0-2. Of those 14, seven never got to the big leagues. Four played 130 games or less. Only one has played more games, and is only one still active, and that's Adrian Gonzalez. That's why when you, you have the draft in a couple weeks, you're just hoping that a few of them make it. You open four or five in any draft, make it to the big leagues. Listen, the NBA lottery was held last night. The Nuggets ended up getting, you know, the same pick as in terms of where they finished. They were seventh, uh, you know, seventh poorest record in the league, and that's the pick they're going to get. There's a reasonable chance, you know, that, that whoever they select, there will be a will be a, a Good player it, to some degree. You hope he's, he becomes a superstar. That misses. In and he'll people, be playing next year. He'll be playing next year in the NBA. You hope. You better not be in the NBA, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. then, then maybe they made a mistake. League. Right. But in baseball, all these picks in the first round, they may not be in the big league for two, three, four, five years if if they get here at all. This is lined to right, and Fargo's going to have to field it on a couple of hops. Leap, DJ. So a two out single for Utley. Dougie's Johnny on the spot with uh, another stat. And I love when we have this discussion because I know people get angry. It's, God, you know, he's done a poor job drafting. This club's done a poor job drafting. That club's done a poor job drafting. 33,405 picks between 1987 and 2008. About a 21, 22 year period. Okay. 33,405. 3,288 made the major leagues. That means they may have had one, one day. One day. But they got there. That means 9.8% of all the players drafted actually wore a big league uniform, no matter how briefly, just 9.8%. So you're telling me that hindsight, you get 100%. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that just shows you how hard it is to go out and try to project somebody and where they're going to end up. Ryan Howard takes outside. It's 2-0. Oh. Well, we were having a discussion the other day with Jimmy Rollins. Yeah, Jimmy I and mean, some scouts didn't want to take him because they thought he wasn't uh, big enough. And, and to get a cross checker there for Philadelphia, they lied the, the scout actually told a fib about how tall Jimmy was. He said he was 5'9 when he was at that time closer to 5'6. Jimmy grew to about 5'8. Fortunately, could the cross, he could flat play and 
unfortunately, the cross checker went out and said, "You know what? You're right. I'm, I'm going to buy into this." Yep. And they drafted Jimmy in the second round. He becomes a great player. Two balls and a strike on Ryan Howard. I was reading, and I think it's 40 percent, Huey. 40 percent of the Seattle roster was undrafted. Super two time Super Bowl participant Super Bowl champion. Howard swings and misses it's three and two. It thrown back to back change ups and now he goes with the running fastball. Big Ryan Howard he didn't go to the fifth round at a Southwest Missouri State. And this ball is lined for a base hit. Utley was on the move. He'll get the third base. Back-to-back so -back singles with two outs, and that'll bring up Michael Franco. These two have done damage for a long time in their career. Ryan goes down to get that fastball on the Subaru Supermo. Drops that back shoulder to help that barrel come through. A bad pitch, wasn't no, it? I mean that's what I'm saying. It was down at least at the knees, if not a smidgen below. Franco has performed well offensively in the series. He's four for eight. Three RBIs last night. It's a wonderful call from Nick Huntley. If he told him, because I was saying it last night, he jumped on a first pitch fastball to drive in a couple runs late in the game. You know he has to be anxious up there, and he threw a, a breaking pitch. 0 oh, 1. Sinker's low, 1 and 1. Franco had a 10 game hitting streak going in the Air National League in uh, Lehigh Valley when he was called up. He was hitting 463. Last year he was third in the International League in ribbies with 78. 33 doubles. And that's a strike one and two. In fact, Franco last year was the uh, Iron Pigs. Worked that in again. <laughs> Their player of the year. Got that in. See if you can get Puddinghead. Puddinghead Jones. Jones. Work him in. One, two. Dismissed with a slider. Two and two. I'm That's not so sure I would. I would. I'm not so I've sure I would go back to that yeah. pitch because he he was frightened that was going to be a called strike three. I got to figure he's going to fire at that if it shows up again. They go fastball and he fouls it off his leg. Tried to go under the hands of Franco. The two pitches on the outside were the sliders. The two inside have been sinking fastballs. The Subaru Supermo on the left foot of Franco. The instep. Now you have them set up for a pitch back inside, or you can go away with the slider. We're Slowly back in. hit. Eddie grabs it barehanded. Low throw past Rosario. He had a little more time. One run scores. Howard to third. Franco to second. You know, Eddie did the toughest part. He somehow got to that with his bare hand. And, you know, the, the clock in his head said, I got to fire it. And he probably had time to, to plant and throw. For the right handed batter, not a particularly fast runner. And Franco will freeze it as soon as he catches it right here. See, he has plenty of time to go ahead and gather himself and then step and throw. He doesn't need to throw off his back foot. And then the other thing is, Willene has to act like a catcher there. Just drop down to a knee to make sure it doesn't get by you. So with two outs, the Phillies come up with the run on an error by Butler. Back-to-back -back games for Eddie with an error. Come on, 
Jeff Francoeur didn't offer it the first pitch, and he's a notorious first pitch swinger in his career. Take that back. Eddie did not have an error last game. It was the game before. So I had to go back in my book. Look. Is that an example for you, Jeff, where when a guy gets to the big leagues for the first time, you know, the manager puts his arm around and says, listen, the bases are still, the old Gene Hackman yeah, line, yeah. base is still 90 feet, the rubber 60 feet, 6 inches. This ball's a base hit, and one run is scored. Here's the throw for Paulson. And they'll hold Franco at second, or excuse me, at third. I'm a little surprised they did that. I'm glad they did. Pete McKinnon. Maybe because it was hit so hard off of the bat of Frank Coor. We line drive and when Ben catches it, he's gathering himself and the runner Franco had just started to round third and it skipped over the head of Nolan. It hit off the lip of the grass and popped high. Reason I thought they'd send it because you have a guy out there that hasn't been out in the outfield much. He's a converted first baseman. And the grass is wet. And the grass is wet. And you know, Franco runs okay. Glad they didn't, as I said, 2 nothing. But to finish your point, yes, you, you put your arm around and say, you know, next time, realize how much time you have. You got time to step and throw. The other thing they'll tell them is, okay, you made a mistake. Don't compound it. Try to get out of the inning. Oduble Herrera at the plate now. First and third. Got to pay attention a little bit also to Frank Coor. Yeah, Jeff's got some years on him now. When he came up, he could run. I mean, he's a big, strong, athletic guy at first base. Kind of a stealth base stealer. He'll yeah. fly under the radar. When you're not paying attention, he'll take off and you, it shocks you. And again, it's 2 and 0, oh, and that's been a consistent pattern with Butler. So after getting the first two guys out, he's now 34 pitches into the inning. And his last start, he had 83 pitches in two and two thirds. Two zero on Herrera, three and zero. Foster on the phone calling down to the bullpen. Looking at either Johan Flande or Christian Bergman. At some point, you have to challenge hitters. Yes, you do. I mean, he did in the first batter at Ben Revere. It will be Johan Flande. Bases are loaded. Actually, Ruiz takes, and that's ball one. Well, veteran hitter, catcher himself. For Eddie, he's now just two for eight first pitch strikes. One and one. 
And the other thing it does, we talk about this all the time, Huey, you were a middle infielder, ties up the leg, and especially on a night like this. I mean, you want to have tempo to the game, period, especially when it's miserable out. At least when it's hot or humid, you, you, you stay loose. I mean, you may... But now with the weather the way it is, it was tough getting loose before a ball game. You had a little miss going down. You'll, you'll jump around, you'll move around, kick your feet together to, to try to stay loose and, and into the game. One and two on Ruiz inside, two and two. Butler got Revere and Galvis to start the inning. Then single, single, the error on the comebacker. Single walk. Two runs in, and that's fouled off. And this is a 42-pitch first inning. You, you hope you're, you're at 42 pitches in the third inning. Well, then you have to be careful of just one of those innings where he throws upwards of 45 to 48. It just can't go that long. It's not good for an arm. Strike three. That'll get the Rockies to the dugout as Ruiz is caught looking. Two runs in the inning, both unearned for Philadelphia. Ball on Route Sports is brought to you by your hometown Toyota stores. Let's go places. By Jack in the Box. Jack's hottest sandwich is back. Head to Jack in the Box for Jack's blazing chicken sandwich. And by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. Hardy fans tonight. Kids don't feel the cold like us adults. <laughs> Charlie Blackman. I believe the surmise doesn't feel the cold because of that uh, beard he's been growing for three years. He brings a 273 average in. Here's the Southwest batting order for Walt Weiss tonight. Troy Tulowitzki had a two run double yesterday. He'll bat second. Cargo will bat third. Arenado, Rosario, Ben Paulson got a pinch hitting appearance last night. Double. Nick Hundley, the hero from last night with the home run in the eighth inning. DJ LeMahieu at 322. And then Butler. And making his third major league start, 22-year-old Panamanian Severino Gonzalez. And his first pitch is in there for a strike. He will not overwhelm you with stuff. No, it's going to be 88 to 91, maybe touch 92, a slider change up and curveball. Frank Cor in right field makes the catch, one out. Philadelphia defensively, Revere, Pereira, and Frank Cor in the outfield. Franco and Galvis on the left side, Utley and Howard again on the right side. And Ruiz doing the catching. When he caught Gonzalez in his major league debut a few weeks ago, they became the first 
Panamanian battery, all Panamanian battery, to start a game. Gonzalez was signed as a free agent back in 2011. Took a loss in his first start against St. Louis. Just two, two and two-thirds of an innings, 10 hits, seven earned runs. And then beat Miami in his next outing. I guess the most famous player from Panama, I may be forgetting, so the Carlos Lee, El Caballo, right? Rod, Rod Carew. Carew is from Panama. That's right, Rod Carew is from Panama. Tulo pulls it foul. The Jets, one guy was getting out of the way, the guy in the brown jacket. He's like, no, I'm, I'm out. I'm not trying to catch it. It's too cold. You make that catch with your bare hands. <laughs> but why? Watch the guy in the brown. He's like, uh oh, uh oh, I don't want it. Yeah, you're gonna have to call a cab because you're not gonna have, <laughs> you, you won't have hand feeling well, in your hands to drive home later. I was just looking when, when Frank Coor caught that ball in right field and he threw it in. I said that looks a little strange. He's wearing a batting glove on his right hand on his throwing hand in the outfield. You've got Peyton Manning on. Yes. Us. Inside. I don't know if I've seen that. Have you I, seen I that? haven't. Frank Gore said, that's oh, too cold. I'll, I'll worry about throwing it after. See? You got batting gloves on. I, I, I've i never <laughs> seen that. Well, I know you couldn't do it in the infield, but maybe the outfielder thinks he can. Three and two on Troy with Cargo on deck. Here's Gonzalez's delivery. Found off. Mariano Rivera also from Panama. Okay, so Carlos Lee just got bumped to third. <laughs> El Caballo, our apologies. <laughs> Pretty good trifecta of players. Yep. I had Rod Carew as a hitting coach when I was with the Angels. That was fun. Talk hitting with him. Bad, wow. Huh? He was a magician. This is fouled off. But he could the, also teach. Rockies had a the Rockies had a pretty good pitcher from Panama, Carlos uh, uh, Carlos uh, Manny Corpus. Manuel Corpus from Panama. Remember when he got into it with Carlos Lee? Yes. I think I there was that. he was from the WBC. They I guess they didn't they get along and it, it kind of carried, carried over, over one next year. I think he Corpus faced Lee and beamed him. Right center field, and it's going to be held up by the heavy air and run down by Herrera, two outs. Well, his first big league start did not go well. He lasted just two and two-thirds, but his next start against Miami gave up just two runs in five innings. Pitch much better. And, and you have to understand the nerves that this guy was pitching with in his first start, just 22 years of age. And here he is making his major league debut. Better stuff the second game, talking with some Phillies people. Said he was able to locate, throw different speeds on his fastball. Took something off there, strike one on cargo. He's faced 15 left handed bats, he's only retired five of them. Eight hits, a couple walks, and an on base percentage of 667 against the few left handers he's faced. Cargo last night walked twice, strikeout and a comebacker as well. Here's the 1 1, and that's fouled off. If the Rockies score seven or more runs during a game, go to participating Colorado Taco Bell locations the next day. You know the drill. Do it between four and six in the afternoon and get your Rockies taco special. One, two. And this is rolled to short. Galvis has it. And the Rockies are done in order. Two nothing Philadelphia as we go to the second.
already talking about Nolan having that on. Last night he put it on mid-game, said he had it in his pocket. I talked to both he and DJ LeMayhew. They said that last night's game, especially late in the game when the miss was coming down, was the worst they've played in in a game. DJ said definitely a Coors Field. And then John Axford said to me, guys, he said he got on the hill in the ninth inning and he saw that fog. And, Drew, you said it looked like Sherlock Holmes was going to be coming into Coors Field. He said he could see his breath and he couldn't believe it. And I said, you're from Ontario. And then he asked me, what's the game time temp now? And I said, 40. And he went, 4-0? And he said, yeah, 4-0. But you should kind of be used to it. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> well, wow. Sherlock Holmes, well, sure a good line last night. To it, though. We, we were chatting with Willene. Here's the 0-1. Uh, oh, and that's in there. It's 0-2 oh, on Gonzalez. Willene came up to us during batting practice. And said that last inning, he said, I couldn't see it all when the mist came in. It made my eyes water. We were also talking about Willene and said, so when was the first time you, you saw snow? And when he came to, to Denver for the Rockies development camp in January. January of 2007. And he was staying with a host family. And he got up at like... The family got him up at, at like six, six in the, the mornings morning. and said, hey, take a look outside. And he was with Samuel DeDuno and Hector Gomez, two guys that are still in the big leagues. And he said, I ran outside in a T-shirt. I picked some up in my hands. And I said, oh, man, that's really cold. <laughs> he said, I ran back inside. It was cold during batting practice today. One and one, it, it was frigid. Line drive toward left, and it's gloved by Ben Paulson. He came on quickly and made the catch. Quick break on the ball from Ben. No hesitation. If ben started playing a little bit of the outfield last year, really in the big leagues. He had eight starts four and left four and right down in albuquerque for the isotopes and he didn't play any outfield at clemson he didn't play outfield his senior year of high school he said my junior year i played some outfield growing up in georgia it does help that he had some experience down in albuquerque playing both left and right all fans attending the Saturday, May 23rd game, the 2-10 game will strike out Stroke Fast Magnet. Join the Rockies in their effort to raise awareness of stroke warning signs and the importance of acting fast. That's a huge outfield, Huey, you know, in Albuquerque. Yes. It goes out to 424 in right center field, and, and it has some nooks and crannies, and they got the little hill out there. I mean, that's a big outfield. Very big outfield. Good field, though. The playing surface is one of the best in the in the leagues if not all of minor league baseball well the ballpark just got voted by baseball america as the ninth best ballpark in, in all of minor league baseball so, i can see why and we we're talking to brandon barnes he said man it's it's fun to, you know to, to go to the ballpark every day we really enjoy it it's a great facility and they're really taken to albuquerque Good college town. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Freddie Galvis hit a fly ball to center field his first time up. Fills up 2 nothing. We used to go down there and play New Mexico when we were both in the whack when I was at Wyoming. We would play at the, the, the stadium down in Albuquerque. That's where the, the Lobos play. Is, that's before they built that's their before own. They, and, built and their own yes. they have a nice ballpark. It's literally Caddy Corner. It's right next to the pit, which is Caddy Corner from the Isotope Stadium. Tulo's coming quickly on the move. He throws out the fleet Freddie Galvis and Butler a much better second inning. Rockies trail 2-0 as we're in the middle of two.
Phil's got two runs in the first, both unearned runs. The day after every Rockies victory, get 50% off your online order at Papa John's. The only thing you have to do is write in the promo code. It's Rocks Win at the Papa John's website. And the heater is a very, very popular spot being near that heater. There's a party going on over there by the heater. Everybody's crammed towards that end of the dugout. Arenado bounces one there. Franco the strong arm. That's what they've been getting. Uh, wanting Franco to do, throw more over the top. He, had, uh, he has a tendency to drop down and throw more sidearm. Larry Bow is telling him, okay, you're going to back up and you're going to have to make this long throw. You want it to stay true and then get on top of the ball so it doesn't fade and sink on you. Yeah, I've always noticed this about Ryan Howard. That's what he catches with two you know, hands. with two hands. I don't know if I've ever seen another first baseman do that. You? No, because that glove is so big and it's designed to catch with one hand. Oh, and one on Rosario. He jumped out of the way. Was in there. Breaking ball. It's two strike count. up that's over by the heater area that would give the Rockies a distinct advantage in this game if Willink pulls one and knocks the heater out <laughs> no more heater for you but then is it like what happens in the NFL where neither side gets a heater then no because that was accidental okay they do have that rule in the NFL but <laughs> right? if our but communication system out, goes down yours, yours is gone. down Opportunity for Franco. Well, the first five have come to bat and failed to reach against Severino Gonzalez. But now it'll be Ben Paulson's turn. Last night, Ben makes a grand return to the big leagues with a double to left center field as a pinch hitter. Over stopping, hustling in, hard slide. Welcome back, Ben. So all the pictures we have of Ben, he has that mustache, right? Yes. Which teammates, they give you grief on everything. And he said, you know, I wasn't hitting well in spring training, so I had to do something about it, so he grew the whole beard. Some guys that do the opposite. So I think it's somebody one time to, like, shave half of their mustache off, thinking that was going to help. <laughs> there it is. Our man Jason Hirsch tweeting he's a big Ben Paulson fan. I get it. There is something about Ben Paulson that there's a gamer element to him. Something you can't teach. He's been a, a game of baseball. He's a lifer. He, he just enjoys coming to the yard. Yep. Two and two. And I think, you know, Jason, like all of us, influenced by what he did last year, coming up and being undaunted, nine game hitting streak to start his career. Second longest in Rockies history. And that's a line drive, and it ugly makes the catch. Juan Pierre, by the way, has the Rockies rookie record for hitting streak, 16 straight to begin his career. Two nothing fills.
nothing Philadelphia. Not camera shy, are you? <laughs> this week on Rockies Real Time in the second installment of the gift of the game, Nolan Arenado learned about the challenges Nolan overcame in the minor leagues to make it to the big leagues. And also how influential Troy Tulowitzki's been in his career. That's all this Friday after the game on Rockies Real Time. That is Nolan Arenado, by the way. Tell it by his eyes. Again, we, we said it last night. If you haven't seen that piece yet, you need to you need to watch the piece that was done on Nolan. Chase Utley swings and misses. Eddie Butler will face Utley, Howard, and Franco. Three, four, and five in the Phillies lineup fills up two to nothing. Drew Goodman, Jeff Houston, Mark Stout. This ball's hit a long way to right center field, and it's run down out there by Charlie Blackman. Nice catch, Charlie. So Utley's retired on a deep fly ball. Ryan Howard coming up, and we welcome to the booth Stephanie Hendrick, Kyle Hendrick, Hendrick. I said Hendrick. Kyle Kendrick's uh, better half. How are you doing, Stephanie? <laughs> Good. How are you? Thanks Good. For Look, I'm me. getting tongue tied because my lips, I can't feel my lips because it's 40 degrees and it's I feel freezing. It, it's, it's like January. We're in Seattle. I, it is That's what I said. <laughs> and you, and when thought you, it's supposed to be nice here. Right. When, when you all signed here, you're used to Philadelphia. So right. De Denver's beautiful, right? It's beautiful. What's happened? I don't know. Kyle's <laughs> from Seattle and I feel like that's where I'm at. Now, did you grow up in the Pacific Northwest as well? No, Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Born and raised, yeah. Okay. City of brotherly love. Yes. You heard that before? Yes, I have. I didn't know. Okay. Yep. Just checking. <laughs> Anyhow, you guys have a great promotion that you guys do every year. I don't want to drop anything, yep. but you brought some toys with you. Mm -hmm. Some nice items. It's the annual wives grab bag this weekend. That's right. right? It's Friday and Saturday. It's um, $40 a bag, and inside the bag is a signed ball, and here's oh. one. What do we have? I made Kyle sign. So that's oh, a yeah. sign. <laughs> Howard just hit this one oh, no. halfway to Philadelphia. Oh, boy. Well, I saw your husband visiting with the enemy, the former, uh, you know, his good friend, yep. Ryan Howard, before the game. And Ryan just uh, went deep to make it 3 nothing. Yeah. This is, we're going to get to the grab bag in a, in a second. This is strange for Kyle, isn't it, this week? Yeah, it is. I mean, he's only been with the Phillies. Um, he was drafted with the Phillies, so he grew up a Philly, and I'm from Philly. So this was a big change for us. Um, we made really good friends there. We loved that organization. So it's really interesting being on the other side of things and them coming out here and us playing against them or Kyle playing against them. Uh, but we're really excited to be here. Yeah, it's a, this. It, trust me, normally this is a beautiful city. <laughs> I, I, I hear that. I never look brunch. at the weather. It's sunny every day. I Over hear that. 300 days a year yeah, of sunshine. I know. I have not given up hope. Franco grounds to short. Tulo's got it. Okay, so tell him. So forty dollars, and, you, and it's you don't know who you you're going to get, which right. is pretty pretty cool. You reach in, all of a sudden right, you get right. so or Kyle Kendrick, yep. whatever. It's great. Yep. And last year they raised almost twenty thousand dollars. It's a really big event. It goes. The proceeds go to Make a Wish of Colorado Foundation, and it's for local children that have been um, diagnosed with life-threatening illnesses. So it is local. All the money does go to them. So it's it's a really great event. If you buy three grab bags, um, the fourth one, you can get something really special, like not just a ball, but maybe a Nolan Arenado signed bat. We'll turn around this there way so go. everybody can see. Or Corey Dickerson signed glove, or it might even be an ex-Rocky player or somebody from the other team even. Oh, wow. So. That's really neat. That's really, and I know, because we've done this for a while, Stephanie, this is wildly popular. I mean, you, you're going to be amazed how quickly you hand yes. out all the grab bags. Yeah, no, it's it, and we're going to be here till they're sold out. We did this in Philly every year too. It's a really fun event. Yeah. The wives really love doing it, so I'm really looking forward to Just it. Just so you know, make sure you take this when you leave, because Drew might try to put it in his pocket. Okay. Because it's cold. <laughs> Great effort by Blackman. Frank Coors going to end up at second with a double. For the wives, and, and again, you're, you're a Philadelphia lady, and, and obviously probably grew up root for the Phillies. Your husband pitched, pitched well for the Phillies for a long time. You guys had that great run. How tough is it to get acclimated 
on, on your side of things. I mean, the guys are in the clubhouse every day. They're in spring training. They get to know each other pretty quickly. No, yeah. getting to know the other wives, has that happened pretty organically? It's it's actually been really awesome. The wives are all really sweet and really nice. Um, they're a lot younger than me. I used to at one point be one of the younger ones. <laughs> um, so now I'm one of the oldies. But they're all really sweet. They all have chil A lot of them have children. Most of them have children. And um, it's a beautiful place. And everybody out here is really nice. Yeah. So that's really helped. But it's always di you know, it's always difficult. Right. And I Kyle, always say it's, Kyle it, looks like he's ready for the climb. He's frozen. Yeah. <laughs> you know, as you say, it's it's harder on the wives than it is the players. It players is. Players are already the minute they walk in a clubhouse, they have twenty five new friends. Right. You know, so for the wives, I remember my wife saying, they, you know, it's you go to the ballpark and then I got to try to find my way there, all where day. to get the tickets, right. all this other stuff. I was lost getting here tonight. <laughs> I, mean, like, I missed the turn. Uh -huh. The kids are yelling. It's their bedtime. Right. Trying to get them on baseball schedule. Yeah, that's uh, how, old, how old are the children? Three and a half and one and a half. Beautiful ages. <laughs> that's full time now. Two very needy dogs at home <laughs> that we brought with us. So, yeah. We're busy. Uh, yes. Yes. I, you know what? I learned a long time ago. And I, hope my, I, I know my wife's not listening right now. But we have three boys. I learned a long time ago, when you're on the road and she's running around three boys and two dogs also, don't mention where you went out to have a nice dinner with Jeff tonight. <laughs> or you had room <laughs> service. Don't yeah, do that. Don't do any of that. <laughs> right. Did the ball game, went home, went to sleep. Right. <laughs> I know. I love that. I just got up. Uh -oh. <laughs> this is a base hit, and this is going to score another run. Frank Coor is going to come around 4 nothing. Herrera with his 13th RBI. Now he's hit in 16 of 19 road games. I'll bring Steve Foster out again. Tommy Reynolds on the phone. Down at the bullpen. You know, for years, when you saw the Phillies, and, and we, the Rockies played them twice in the postseason, as you know, the 07 and, and 2009. I was here for that. Yeah, that's right. And, and, you know, Jimmy Rollins and Ryan Howard and Chase Utley and your husband. It was, it was the same group. And, I, and I'm not saying this just because with Jeff and I have talked a lot about this. That was a really good group to visit with as a, as a, Announcer for another team. Great guys. Everybody seemed to be, you know, warm. It seemed like a really close knit bunch. Yeah, they are. They're all still really close. I mean, Kyle's still close with those guys, and Cole, and Chooch, and yep. I mean, they grew up together. Yeah, really. You know. Oh, no, happy Carlos Ruiz. Uh, Chooch is right now with that pitch up and in. Johan Flande up again in the bullpen. And that's the second time he's been up. So Eddie's got to put this inning down quickly or it's going to be another short night. Four runs on six hits for the Phils. That's a nice bat you brought. That's not nice. a Nolan bat. Slider misses 2 and 0. 71 pitches in now for Butler with two outs in the third inning. Speed at first in Odubel Herrera. Down the line and just foul. Behind that has is Hunter Windelstadt with the call. It was a foul ball. Good thing with the rare speed, he might have scored from first. And this gets by Rosario. Move into scoring position. And with that ball in the dirt, that's going to be Butler's second error. Third of the season. Yeah, 
it down and across from Willene. He has the runner sliding back in. And now they'll put Ruiz on. With Gonzalez on deck yeah. and already down four runs. You have to do this. He's actually he have been in a period where they've pitched decently over their last seven ball games. Actually, last eight games, the starters have a 3.64 ERA. The staff overall a 3.45 ERA. So the pen has pitched well the last week. Yeah, a couple back-to-back -back seven inning performances. And that's ball one on Gonzalez, who struck out his first time. Shocked that he swung the bat there. You have a He's guy a that's young kid. Yeah, He's well, 22. It, That's why. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised he had didn't <laughs> have a, a take, take sign. Time. Yeah. Glad he did. That'll end the inning. Two runs on three hits and a walk. Steffi, thank you very much. Good luck this weekend. Thank Tell you. us one more time when the grab bag is uh, uh, both days, right? Friday and Saturday. Yep, Perfect. we're here until the balls sell out. That's terrific. Nice to meet you as thank well. Thank you. Nice to meet you guys. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Stephanie Kendrick. Rockies looking for their first base runner against 22 year old Severino Gonzalez. Nick Conley will lead things off. Stay warm any way you can tonight. 40 degrees at first pitch. Again, thanks to Stephanie Kendrick and the Rockies wives with their annual grab bag coming up Friday and Saturday. Make sure you get here early. Those baseballs go very quickly. I was thinking about that Nolan bat myself, seeing if it made it out of the <laughs> out of the booth. I I really like. Did you ever use? I really like those two tone bats. Yeah, I never used those. They, they really weren't a thing until later on. Um, but yeah, those are. They look really nice. Uh, 
having a chat yesterday with DJ about bats and what type of bat he uses because his is his own. He asked me what type I used. Was it ash or maple? I said, we only had ash, ash to start with. We didn't have the maple bats. Maple had to come in toward the end of your yeah, career. Yeah, towards right? the end, but by that time, I'd, it's like, no, I just like that. I was locked into the ash. Yeah. There's a handful uh, of guys that use birch. Do you ever swing a birch bat? No. They say it's kind of a combination. Maple is known for being really hard. Wood and ash, they say, get flaky. There's a little more flexibility to it. And birch is supposedly in the middle. One and two on Hundley. And Franco's been busy. First seven retired by Severino Gonzalez. Mark, what's going on? You know what? I've been doing some research on the Big Red Machine, the 75 Reds, because the team's going to Cincinnati, and I've got a, a little feature we're going to do since that's 40 years ago. John Vuku, Vukovic was the original third baseman and was on that team, but he started early, and he was such a light-hitting third baseman. Sparky Anderson, you're talking about Wood, nicknamed him Balsa. <laughs> Is that uh, bad, Huey, when yes. your manager nicknames you Balsa? You really better be able to pick it. <laughs> yeah, that's that. that. <laughs> Just because you're talking about wood. Right, yeah. but Balsa would so, oh, my. That would be good. And to have Sparky Anderson yeah. unless, say that about unless, you? Unless, like, when you ran out to the field, he called you gold, as in gold glove, to oh, counter man, it. You know what? Mark Belanger. I think uh, Mark Belanger would make it. The blade. Not real, not real good with the bat, but he could pick it. Played a long time because he yes, could pick he it. Yes, he did. That was back in the era. You know, Larry Boa, Buddy Harrelson, Don Kester was back in the era. This is deep in the hole. Galvis jump throw, and he gets LeMahieu. That's a pretty play by Freddie Galvis. But it was back in the, in the era where if you could play short, you didn't have to. Uh, no. You, you, didn't, you didn't have to hit very much. Well, the Rockies are going to go to Jordan Lyles now to pinch hit, save their bench. But Walt has seen enough of Eddie Butler this evening, and he's going to go to the bench and have Jordan Lyles pinch hit here in the third. Well, this is a great play on a on a warm, sunny, dry day. And that play from Freddie Galvis, he made it look like it was nothing on a wet, damp, cold night. One and one on Lyles. And this is popped up in the infield. Utley is going to make the play. And the first nine have been retired by Severino Gonzalez in his third major league start. 4 nothing Philadelphia.
On this frigid night, kind enough to join us for a moment uh, downstairs. Well, not ideal uh, playing conditions, and, and unfortunately, part of the process with the young pitchers learning how to throw consistent strikes, Eddie's really battling in that department, isn't he? Yeah, especially lately. Um, you know, uh, got off to a good run early on, but lately he's been struggling with command. And on the flip side, Gonzalez kind of moving the ball in and out, not overpowering, but just keeping the hitters off balance. Yeah, we knew he was a strike thrower, um, always has been, and, and uh, not overpowering, but, uh, but commanding the ball pretty well right now. All right, well, good luck the rest Thanks, of the way. Walt. Thanks, So in the fourth inning, Ben Revere will lead off for Philadelphia. Freddie Galvis and Chase Utley will follow, and Johan Flande will have an opportunity to... Hopefully throw up some zeros and let the offense do their thing get the Rockies back in this ball game. And one thing about Flande, we'll just say we knew Severino Gonzalez was a strike thrower. Johan Flande, not overwhelming stuff, but he's a strike thrower. Yeah, and Christian Bergman the same way out of the bullpen, those long haul guys, they have to do that. They have to be counted on if it's if they haven't seen the field in six or seven days, they have to be counted on to come in and throw strikes. And Flande will do that. He was 5 0 down at double A. Kind of a veteran among some youngsters. But it doesn't, nothing really phases him. One, two. And a ground ball to Willene. That's a fair ball. He's got a hustle. You got speed coming up the line. Good job by the Bull. Right up the line for Willene. You know, he knows that Flande is not going to get there. So rather than risk trying to make it a foot race, say, I'll take it myself, hold up the hand, and then it's just a foot race between Willene and then Ben Revere. Freddie Galvis is 0 for 2. And he tries to bunt his way on. That's pretty good bunt. Flande, to get him. You bet. That's a nice play by Flande and a good job by Rosario because Jeff, you played some first say, base. He had to make that catch with the runner coming right down the lane at his arm. That's what I was going to say. I thought it was a better play from Willene because of that. That could have been called interference, though, if they don't get Revere. Final look on the Subaru Supermo. He is out. Foot still on the bag. Flande has the first two. Chase Utley coming up here. Utley a single and a fly ball to deep center field. Career 340 hitter against the Rockies, 61 ball games. That's the sixth highest uh, batting average among active players against Colorado. Number one is Detroit's Miguel Cabrera. Go figure. <laughs> and you say, wait a second, how many times what? did Cabrera face the Rockies? Remember, folks, he was a Marlin for a long time. So he's faced him, uh, faced the Rockies quite a few times. It's the 1-0 from Flande. Flande earned a trip back to the big leagues because he was 5-0 with a 136 ERA in New Britain and a, and a whip below one. Six hits for Philadelphia. They had five runs last night on 11 hits in the Rockies 6 5 victory. And of course, the victory snapped the Rockies six game losing streak at home. It also snapped the Phil's six game winning streak, which was tied with the White Sox for the longest in baseball going into yesterday. Well, during those six games, they scored four more runs in those six games than they have four tonight. Whatley draws a two out walk. And Ryan Howard's two for two. Talking about how they did last night offensively. The Phillies of the nine guys that started, eight had hits. The only guy who didn't have a hit last night was Ryan Howard. He went 0 for 4. And a hat trick. And three punch outs. I guess he's making up for it tonight. A single, 
and a home run. He has scored two runs. His home run went to dead center field, his eighth on the season, 342nd of his career, second on the all time Phillies list. One is far off. Michael Jack Schmidt. Ground ball past Willine, diving stop. DJ Willine gets back to the bag in plenty of time to get big Ryan Howard. Great play by DJ. In the inning, Utley walked, nothing else across. Rockies coming about in the bottom of the fourth inning, trailing 4-0. Huey, if you look carefully through the fog and the mist uh -huh. and the rain, you can see the CenturyLink Tower. Barely. Barely. Got to be tough and hardy tonight at Coors Field. Game time temperature 40 degrees at first pitch. Now, the thermometer out there still says 40. I don't know if I'm buying into that. I'm saying it's in the 30s. Rocky's second look now at Severino Gonzalez, who's been perfect so far. Nine set down to begin the ball game. Charlie Blackman hit a fly ball to right. Blackman to Lewitsky Gonzalez. Severino, nine and thirteen last year, and twenty-seven starts at Double A ready. This year, in five starts before he was recalled, he was one and two at the four thirty-four. Yeah, I mean. It's not like he was tearing it up. They had a need, and he was the next guy ready to come up. But it's not again like he had a 120 ERA and was knocking at the door. This ball is pulled foul. And the need was because Chad Billingsley strained his right lap. He's going to be out four to six weeks minimum. You know, in visiting, as you look at Ryan Sandberg with. Some of the Phillies today, they were hopeful that he could give them a competitive five innings, and then they figured they'd have to turn it over to the bullpen. Well, here he is in the fourth. He hasn't given up a hit till now. So that hopefully gets the Rockies going. Charlie with a single to center. With every challenge called the Subaru Eyesight Review will determine the outcome. Love, it's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. What are you laughing at? Broke out your cheater glasses tonight. I did that just for show. <laughs> or to be able to see some read you have to do. Far more the former than the latter. Troy Tulowitzki hit a fly ball to center his first time. Blackman dives back in. Just glad you joined me. Felt bad because you're older than I am. You break it down. <laughs> Just 
<laughs> Just my eyesight. There goes Blackman. Foul tip, throw to second, not going to get Charlie. Six stolen base this season for Charlie. Now Carlos Ruiz just three for 20 throwing out would be base stealers. Last year he was fifth in the National League at about a 22% clip. This year below 16. I had to wait and stay back behind home because of the swing from Troy. We're talking about stolen bases and catcher's involvement in that. And I thought Walt made a very interesting point. He said at the big league level, it's more about the pitcher and his time to the plate and holding the baseball and how he handles the running game than the catcher. Well, most of the time that's true. It might not be that way with you know, three or four catchers in the big leagues because they're there for their back. But if a, if a pitcher has a high leg kick, and we always say the magic numeral is 1.3 seconds from the time he lifts his leg to the ball, ball hits the catcher's glove. If he's above that, you should be able to steal. 1-1, one, one, and Tulo pops it up. The first out of the fourth inning. Salas will come up. Cargo broke his bat, rolled one to short. With Charlie Blackman reaching. Last night the Rockies won six to five, but amazingly they went the whole night without having a leadoff man on. So you have to go all the way back to the sixth inning of Monday's ball game. So the Rockies would lose four to three. The last time the leadoff man reached for Colorado. Was this man at the plate, Carlos Gonzalez? Cargo. Cargo in his career against Philadelphia, 361 average. And we're talking about guys that have 100 or more plate appearances. Ryan Braun's number one, Starling Castro's number two. A base hit. See if Blackman can score on it. He'll get the green light and he'll come home easily. So Cargo drives in the Rockies' first run. It's four to one. Twelfth RBI for Gonzalez. Make that career average go up. Better bats, better approach. Broken bat. Right off the label of you know, that swing, but still he's staying inside the baseball. And he's, and he's still hit it hard. I'd be willing to bet if he's not number one, he's in the top five in baseball annually in broken bats. It seems like every other night at least he's breaking a bat. When you get hits, you go through. Go through 200 at bats if you want to do that way. Yeah. Got to pack a few extra than some oh, other well. folks. I mean, Alan Bosser does a great job. So it, it, AB, I need some more. Go ahead, go ahead and pack two more dozen for me. One strike on Arenado. Now back. Nolan generally tough to strike out. He's accumulated some strikeouts lately. Chasing more off the plate away than he was the first month of the season. You know, he would look at those and eyeball those. He'd just walk out there and say, no, that's not a strike. And now he just once in a while it just feels like he's feeling for the for the pitch, fishing for it. This ball driven to deep left field. Revere is going to get there. Cargo is all ready to second. He's got a return. Two outs. Nolan had a 
line out to right field last night. Now a line out to left tonight. Hey, up, Vic. I'll pay 100 out. Well, see, that goes back because Vic felt like he was getting stonewalled. He couldn't get the tweet on the Twitter talk. Vic, it, it's not the personal. Evidently, it's very busy. It's hard to get on. His well, name's Mike Fox, producing tonight. When you break out, check you break money out order, uh, the check the cash, book, you usually find a way on. That lit up the truck. <laughs> <laughs> dollar signs. First rounds on you uh, in Philly there, Mike. Should have offered more money, baby. Well, Mike, he would have done it for 25. We should have been in charge. Yes. We could have, we could have extracted <laughs> more money out of Lombardi. We could have negotiated. Oh, Vic. One and one on Waleen. And that's a base hit. Fargo rounds the bag at second. He's going to push it to get the 30 win. Behind him, Rosario's thrown out. Not a good move. And that's how the inning will end. Rocky's got a run on the base hit by Gonzalez. It's four to one as we go to the fifth. Lexus dealer. Butler could have gotten out of that first inning, but he rushed the throw and threw it away. A run scored, and then there was a base hit for Jeff Francoeur to bring home another run in the first inning. The two unearned runs against Eddie there, and then another run on a home run from Ryan Howard. The Rockies just got their run on a base hit by Carlos Gonzalez. Charlie Blackman, who had a single and a stolen base, came around. Four to one the scores we go to the fifth inning. I understand being aggressive and, and Willene was trying to be aggressive trying to read the throw as cargo went first to third. But when you're down three runs you, you, you got to be smart. Can't, yeah you can't get thrown out when you still have Ben Paulson you, you have guys that can drive you in even if you're at first base. You can also stop halfway. If you see them cut the ball off, you can go back because the throw was coming in from left field. Good off speed pitch from Flande, and it's one and one on Franco. And I and I get it, Hugh. You've been on teams that have been struggling, and, and it's born out of. The thought process is a positive one in that he's trying to make something happen. He's trying to force the issues, trying to do something to ignite the club. Force but, is the right word. 
Yeah, you just try to make things or create things that are, aren't there. Let's point this out. Three and one on Franco. One of the things I think so many players learn from watching Jason Giambi when he was here, and he was paid other than the occasional start to, to be that big back coming off a ball game down a run or even late. And there were so many times if he didn't get a strike rather than put it all on himself and say, hey, this, you know, it's all about me. He just throw the bat aside and walk to first base. That's ball four. Well, you and, and pass I, the baton. Yeah, but you and I talked to him about that. Say, where where did you learn this? He you learned that early in his career from, from, from older guys saying, you know what? If it's not there, it's okay. You go ahead and go to first base and let this next guy. That's why we're a team. Guys like Carney Lansford who came up with Oakland. Frank Cora single and a double tonight. He's pinch hit in each of the first two games. This is his initial start of the series. Well, Ryan Sandberg will do that. He'll, he'll go with Grady size more for a little. He was hitting, then he felt like, well, I need to give Frank Cora a couple starts, two or three starts in a row. So that's how Ryan will work those two guys to make sure they keep them both fresh. Season as a manager, 52nd manager in Philly's history. That's when you know you've been around a long time as a team. 52 managers. I mean, Charlie Manuel did such a good job. Charlie was there forever. You look up folksy in the dictionary, you see Charlie Manuel. Right? I remember when he was with Cleveland, hitting coach and managing in Cleveland. Charlie was a big slugger in Japan. Swung on and missed, and the strikeout of Frank Coor by Flande, first out of the fifth inning. Charlie Manuel and Grady Little were similar in that folksy sure. down home way. Or take something off the slider. Doug loves the history of 18 or excuse me of 19th century baseball. So he just handed me a note that the uh, Philadelphia Quakers in 1883 joined the National League. Were they in the Federal League before that? They were an expansion team back in 1883. Philadelphia A's with the American Association. This is going to be tough. Big chopper. You get the out there. That's it. DJ did a good job tagging Franco. So Herrera trades places with Franco. Two outs, and that'll bring up Carlos Ruiz. MLB.tv Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, is celebrating 13 years. You can watch every out of market game live or on demand in true HD, real time highlights, live look ins, pitch trackings, and more. Blackouts and other restrictions may apply, but visit MLB.tv for more details. Talking about Ruiz and Gonzalez earlier. There have been 55 Panamanians to play in the big leagues. Hall of Famer Rod Carew, more than 90% of ben, votes in his first year on the ballot. Ben Ogilvy, Manny Sanguin. I used to love watching Manny Sanguin. Manny Sanguin was a catcher who could run. Ooh, oh, look at it. Rondé got leather on it, knocked it down, and then he'll complete the play at first. Good reaction by Johan on that bullet back up the middle by Ruiz. There was a walk and a man left. The Rockies trailing four to one, middle of five.
He didn't play a lot of outfield growing up. In fact, he played a little bit last year, and I was talking to him. He said he was thinking about going to Georgia Tech, and they wanted him to play outfield, but he went to Clemson. And as Rockies fans know, Kyle Parker, who's a triple-A Albuquerque, he went to Clemson as well and played outfield. He was telling me that Parker guys went as a catcher, had two bullpens, was so bad they put him at third. He made three errors in an inning, and then they said, maybe you want to play outfield. So he went to the outfield, and, of course, Ben played first base. And by the way, he's wearing number 10 now because of Chipper Jones. That's that's his hero. People may have heard that in spring training. So here's Paulson. Mark, thank you. Ben swings at the first pitch. It's a floater out there to the left center field. He's got himself a hit. So Ben lined out his first at bat, had the double last night, picking up uh, Huey where he left off last year. Yeah, two for three on the season. Back to back innings. The Rockies have the leadoff man on. Clemson uh, tweeting out five shout players. out to the former Tiger. Yeah, five Clemson players in the big leagues. So Nick Huntley up there. Nick grounded to third his first time. You know, when Huntley went deep through the night air, the frigid night air last night, it ended a four game homerless streak at Coors Field for the club. It's only the seventh time. The Rockies have had a streak of four more games at home in this facility in a single season without hitting a home run. I was talking to Nick today right before stretch and I said I couldn't tell. I, th I thought she got it pretty well but I thought it was going to be a double or maybe off the wall. He goes me too. He, I knew I hit some backspin on it but he thought that rough had hit his out in the seventh. Remember that ball that was caught right against the fence. So that's why he, did, he didn't know if his was going to make it or not. Well Walt after the game said honestly I didn't with the conditions. I didn't think he could hit it out. <laughs> Nick was saying I put some backspin on it. I clipped it pretty well. But then what he said is now he needs to keep it going. Not just him but as a team. Back it up with another another W. It brings some fire. He does. It brings a little football mentality to the game. And we know the history with his dad and him playing, but it's a certain certain mentality when you when you bring that football energy. Now you got another guy who brings football energy in that dugout, and that's Brandon Barnes, who again, if you missed it, was recalled today. Drew Stubbs was optioned to to Albuquerque. There's Barnsley next to Blake Doyle. Two and one on Hundley against Severino Gonzalez. Rockies down by three runs. So Drew Stubbs had to okay the move because of his service time. But to his credit, he did. He said, I need to go down there. We need to we need to work this out together as a as an organization. Because he could have said no and then forced a hand to do it some other way. Inside three and two. I mean by that meaning they could, they would have said, okay, we might just have to release you if you don't want to go down. When, when Barnes takes that sweatshirt off, makes his first appearance, you'll see Brandon, who's always in phenomenal shape. He he's 15 pounds lighter than last year. He was playing about 218 last year, and he has seven stolen bases down in Albuquerque. Speaking of stolen bases, runner going line drive right center field, leaping catch made by Herrera, and they're going to double up Ben Paulson, who is. Already around second base. Herrera leaps, makes the catch, and it turns into a double play. Ben being too aggressive. He takes off, and right now is when you have to freeze. You can't continue around the bag. A leaping grab by Herrera. But if you see the hit and run on, or if you take off, pretty good ups there from Herrera on the Subaru Supermo. 
But watch Ben. He looks up. Now he needs to stop and figure out where the ball is, pick it up. Instead, he's in no man's land. Yeah, his read on it that was that it was going to be in the gap. But if it's in the gap, it's over his head. You're going to score anyway. Yep. LeMayhew with the 1 0. That's in there 1 and 1. Well, one positive offensively tonight. The Rockies have not struck out. They have a string of seven straight games with at least 10 plus strikeouts, which is the second longest since 1900. San Diego had an eight game in 2011. Rockies also set a major league record last week when they struck out 14 or more times in three straight games. 14, 14, 18. And 46 strikeouts. By four of the most the Rockies have ever had in a three game span. DJ with another hit. Flande is being called back and it'll be Descalso to hit for him. Now Daniel's in a good place offensively. He really came alive at Dodger Stadium. Back-to-back -back three back three hit games. Six for 12. We have the double off the wall. Also have the home run to right center field. He knew he was going to be playing with Choi out for a few days with the quad injury. So when you we can pile up those at bats and then you're asked to pinch hit, it makes your job not quite as daunting. Severino Gonzalez will face Daniel Descalso with LeMahieu at first. Descalso, six for his last ten at the plate, including the bases clearing double. You saw the home run. And this is lifted to right field. Frank Coor near the line will get there. In the inning, there were a couple hits and a man left. The Rockies, as we go to the sixth, trailing Philadelphia four to one. Ford Super Duty, built better, built stronger, built Ford tough. By Southwest Airlines, book your low fare now at southwest.com. And by CenturyLink, your link to what's next. Temperatures dip to 39 degrees, slight breeze, feels like 34. Does not feel like the third week of May. Drew Goodman, Jeff Houston, Mark Stout.
The Phils leading four to one tonight as we go to the sixth inning. The Rockies on to their third pitcher. Eddie Butler went three innings, gave up four runs, two earned. Johan Flande, two scoreless innings. Now Ken Roberts out of Middle Tennessee State takes over. And Anders Blanco, Blanco will uh, be the pinch hitter as Philadelphia is going to go to their bench after five innings from Severino Gonzalez. And a curveball for a strike from Roberts. It'll be the seventh opportunity for Roberts to pitch at the big league level. Good for him. He's finally starting to settle in somewhat at the big leagues. You know what it's expected of him, what it's like standing out on the big league mound. Tulowitzki gobbles that one up, one out. Gonzalez for the Phillies is pretty much what they wanted out of him five or six innings They weren't asking him to go out and throw a complete game he Gave the five innings one run on five hits. Well, he was perfect through the first three Jay Deakman who threw last night Up again Ben Revere's 0 for 3 Also, did not walk about it. No strikeouts, no walks. Flande, two scoreless innings. He walked two, struck out one. Did not give up a hit. Four runs, six hits. For Philadelphia run five hits two errors both errors were on Butler so Not only did Eddie struggle on the mound he struggled fielding None bigger than the throwing error in the first off the bat of Franco Had a chance to get out of the inning Threw the ball away That led to the 200 runs Toughest guy to strike out in the National League. Speaking of strikeouts, you see Brantley with Cleveland only has eight strikeouts on the year. He's some kind of player. I mean, eight. That's a guy that hits some home runs too. He's not just looking to hit the ball on the ground and, and use his speed. Well, if you look at the 2014 numbers, especially among position players. Wins above replacement, war. Brantley's one of the top five players from a year ago. But again, he played in Cleveland and you know doesn't have the big sexy name, and, and people probably don't realize that. But he hits some home runs, he steals bases, doubles, hits for average, and as you said, you know, he gets on base because he, he gets the ball in play. Good outfielder, too. Yes, he is. Strong arm. Remains one and two on Ben Revere. Spike that curveball. This one in play on two hops. Rosario hits the moving target that is Ken Roberts. Well done. Two outs. Well, let's go back to our tweets and see what's next on Toyota Talk. So, when exactly <laughs> is Root Sports Rocky Mountain Mountain going to give Doug Marino his own show? Well, we're in competition right now. The, the most, oh, look at that. The most interesting man in Colorado. Wait, we, we is would, it hashtag that? Yeah, we would not disagree. Now, <laughs> Here's here's the issue. 
to be completely frank we are in negotiations extended negotiations right now root sports is and we're battling the good folks at CBS because there's a fellow who's had a long time late night show that that's decided to retire and tonight's the last one and so there's significant competition shall we say we can't say any more than that but significant competition for you know Doug and his hosting well, talents. I, I know Doug you know Doug we've been with him a long long time I'm not sure he can leave the mountains well, uh, I mean, he has, right, enough, he has enough pull. Right. He has enough pull that perhaps that program emanates oh. from the mountains. I hadn't even looked at it that way. Wow. Because you and I don't have that kind we of We don't have that. Juice. Right. The most interesting man in Colorado. Who would argue? <laughs> That's going to be trending argue? soon. <laughs> We're going to create a monster. Three O's in there. Three and one on Galvis. So you could you can't be on Kavnar tonight probably. Could you you think you can get on Dougie's show? I don't know. <laughs> can't get on Kavnar tonight. I can't get on <laughs> late night with Dougie. <laughs> Maybe I could get on like you know the, <laughs> his version of stupid pet tricks or something. <laughs> Perhaps. You know, he'll, you'll have a segment like hikes with Doug, right? Well, maybe I could be like the guest hiker just in the background. I, I don't have any lines or anything. Just in the background is one of the extras hiking along the trail. You'll have to carry his pack. Yeah, well, sure. Yeah, sure. But. Round ball to second. DJ's there and a nice inning for Ken Roberts. Well, right now, it's all about the O. The Rockies need to get that offense going. Please, Doug, can we be on your program? 4-1. on a base hit from Carlos Gonzalez who's due up third this inning. It's time for our century link link to what's next. Tomorrow afternoon the series concludes between the Rockies and Phillies. No television and tomorrow. We'll pick up again Friday. It is a four game set in three days against the Giants. Of course they have to make up a game so Saturday is a day night doubleheader. We have both games for you. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and if we were to peek ahead to Monday, a reminder that we'll be on the air very early Monday because it's Memorial Day from Cincinnati. Jake Deakman was in the ball game last night, the hard-throwing left-hander, and the Rockies ended up scoring a couple times against Deakman last night. All with two outs, and the biggest one at bat. Yeah, you had, you had the double by Tulo, which was the blooper down the line, but it was by this guy coming to the plate, Charlie Blackman. He took the walk, tough left-on-left -left matchup. Somebody that's throwing 97 miles an hour, and he worked a walk to allow Troy to drive in the runs. Strike one from Deakman at 95. 
So Gonzalez five innings a run on five hits. Didn't walk anybody didn't strike anybody out but. I'm sure Ryan Sandberg and Bob McClure their pitching coach are thrilled with. What he did he threw 65 pitches 45 for strikes he, he challenged the hitters doesn't have the, the stuff where it wows you or if you're a scout saying man look at this guy he could just throw it by everybody no but he, he pitched he didn't throw Two pitch plunks Blackman and Charlie is aboard leading off the sixth inning. Now, was this a three for one? There's one, two, two. no, just a two for one. Well, sort of a three for one because I think it got Ruiz twice. twice. That went off. Troy 0 for 2. He had the fly ball double down the right field line that scored two last night to put the Rockies up 5 to 3. Unfortunately, the Rockies gave that lead right back to Philadelphia. It allowed the Phils to tie it up, and that's what set up the eighth inning heroics of Nick Hundley. This is a chopper to deep short, and they do get the force. As Galvis got it to Utley in time to get Blackman. Galvis knew he wasn't going to turn two, and then Chase acted like a first baseman. With the right foot on the bag and just stretched. Get out of there, but get the lead runner. Once Galvis come over, plants on his right foot, and then Chase. Catches it, gets off the back, so the runner doesn't have a chance to slide into him. Cargo faced Deekman last night, and on the first pitch, he hit a comebacker. Fastball strike one. Cargo a single to center his last time up to drive in the only Rockies run. Tulowitzki at first with one out. Cargo two home runs six driven in, in his last seven ball games. He had two home runs six ribbies his first 29 games. He's starting to get more comfortable at the plate. Every hitter no matter how gifted will tell you a season is a grind. Everybody would like to come out of spring training and we'll hit 400 in April because then you feel like you have some some wiggle room. Got some bank. Yeah. Instead, you come out, and you're hitting the buck 50 or whatever Chase Utley's hitting, and it's, it's scratching and clawing every single day when you step in the box. Deekman wins that battle, two outs, and that'll bring up Aaron Otto. First time the Rockies have struck out in this ballgame. Check out the on deck rooftop ticket package it's available online only it's the most affordable and flexible way to purchase rooftop tickets for more information visit rockies.com slash rooftop Albuquerque was off tonight John Gray will go tomorrow night New Britain lost tonight in Akron four to three but the Rock Cats are still 27 and 11 Arenado fouls that off Trevor Story, one for four tonight. He's hitting 343. Tom Murphy, two for four. He's at 305. David Dahl's hitting around 270. Three of the top prospects in double A for the Rockies. Two strikes.
strikes out Arenado. So the Rockies will leave a runner at first base, and we move to the seventh inning. Three-run lead for Philadelphia. First inning, Rockies have done very little offensively, and they have nine more outs to work with. Ken Roberts, second inning of work, Chase Utley, Ryan Howard, and Michael Franco. Oh, this was photo day today uh, earlier this afternoon. There's the Rockies tweeting that out. Took that around 3 o'clock today out in center field. Curveball for a strike. Side on Utley, two balls and a strike. And that's low three and one. DJ boy that oh. came up late on him. And he it. But he was down on a knee because as a second baseman you can do that. You can drop to a knee. About halfway here you're sitting there going I'm not going to get a good hop. I'm not going to get a good hop. But you just still have to keep your body soft no matter how much it tries to tense up. Off the heel and then finally corrals it right by his right rib cage on the Subaru Supermo. So he keeps his arm tucked underneath there. I've got it. I feel it there. That's why he wears gold. One and one on Ryan Howard. One and two.
2006 to 2011, Ryan Howard, he averaged 153 games a year. That is ripped past Rosario in the right field corner. Howard will end up the second with a double. Eighth double of the season for Ryan Howard. Leans back. It's a short hop. Tried to work down up, but it was by him before he could get the glove back up. Michael Franco reached on an error, ground ball to short and a walk. One out. And Roberts delivers strike one. What do you think the Vegas odds are that Ryan Howard pulls off a cycle tonight? He's got the home run, he's got the double, and the single. Pretty high. Yeah, I don't think it's going to. Uh, triple's not going to be involved. That would be the tough one. And we're sitting in the seventh inning. I agree. It's a bouncing ball to second. DJ moves his feet. Throws out Franco. Doug, you beat me to it. I was looking it up. 21 career triples. You wouldn't have thought that many, would no, you? No, I would not. The last cycle by a Philly was 2004. David Bell against the Expos, if you're wondering who the last Philly to have a cycle was. David's coaching still, isn't he? I don't know. He was. Speaking of somebody that's coaching in the Philly system, Mickey Morandini. Mickey Morandini, really. Yes. He's a coach at Lehigh Valley. I just remember Harry Callis saying Mickey Morandini. And just the, the way he used to pronounce it. Late, great Harry Callis. Jeff Francoeur, single and a double tonight. 2 0. Oh. Busy inning for DJ. He throws out Frank Core. Howard's left at third base, middle of seven, four to one, Philadelphia at Coors Field.
one Phillies. I want to tell you about Nick Hundley, who's due to hit third in this half inning. I was talking to Renee Latchman today about Nick Hundley and about how he's the backbone of the team. Here's what he said about Hundley. Last night he comes up with an offensive home run. Uh, he didn't do too well as far as I was concerned blocking a ball, and he knows about that tomorrow. And on, the day, on Thursday he's not playing, so he'll get uh, come down to the bullpen and we'll work on the fields of death or the wheels of death with uh, a little machine that I have to try and block some sliders. So, But he's been outstanding. I couldn't ask for a better person to work with. Drew Huey, the wheel of death, I'm, I'm going to guess. Is that, a, is that a pitching machine? Yes. And you just turn it the other way and just send balls right down at him is that is that how that works that's pretty much how it works guessing, yeah, yeah you just put yeah then then they just fire balls at you and you, yeah. you have your gear on you good just luck. work yeah, yeah good luck huh? take a few off your arm off your chest well that's what uh, nick hunley's got planned for tomorrow courtesy latch nick's been sensational though and you can tell latch is latch but you can tell how much latch appreciates the job nick's done foul ground frank four can't get there and then he uh Almost hurt himself. Yeah, he may have. That hit him on his uh, foot. Right foot. Right between. He couldn't tell. It looked like he was going to sprain his ankle. Whatever it was, it was not pretty. He's still wearing the batting glove on his right hand. He has not. He has not had to make a throw, though, has he? No, he has. Did he make a throw with that? Yeah. DJ LeMayhew hit the single down the right field line where he had to go over and cut it off and make the throw back into second. He had it on then. Well, the glove works. He's got one of the bigger arms in baseball. We talk about Brandon Barnes and his high energy. Jeff Frank is that way. Always been that way. Always played. With a broad smile on his face. Loves to play. One and two on Willeen trying to kick start the offense in the seventh. Willeen's one for two. Ben Paulson on deck. Second inning work for Deakman. Goes foul and part of the bat stuck in the that didn't stick. It came. It fell now. But initially, it was sticking up in the grass. Doesn't matter whether it was ash, maple, or birch, or balsa. Where he hit it, any bat's going to splinter, split. Just appreciate the matchup when you have a power pitcher and a power power hitter. You're gonna throw your hard fastball. I'm gonna take a hard swing. Another one, two. That missed at 97. Two and two on Willeen. Put a lefty out there. I don't think Willeen's not a tough out against righties, but you put a lefty out there, and, and Willeen is a really difficult out. It just picks up the ball. It's it's a comfortable at bat for him. Doesn't have to worry about the slider that's going away from him. This would be pitch number ten of the encounter. Willeen leading off here in the bottom of the seventh. 
inside. At 98. Pop up, shallow right. Frank Coor, Utley, Frank Coor, and it's a fair ball. And Rosario standing on second base. That was somewhat reminiscent of Tulowitzki's last night, though Tulowitz wasn't hit quite as high. So we'll see if that break for the Rockies can ignite the offense. And I was watching Chase Utley. As he's going back to the ball, he looks at Frank Coor. Frank Coor is running with his arms out. And he takes a peek down at Chase Utley. Utley thought Frank Coor is going to catch it. Oh, he's saying I got it, but then didn't even pick up the ball at the end. You can see that on the Subaru Super Bowl. That's why Utley backed off. Usually, Huey, wouldn't that be an easier play for the second baseman? In that instance, as where he was running, how he was going to it, yes. I mean, 99% of the time, you're saying the outfielder has priority over the infielder, but that is not a hard one for the for the second baseman as he's going towards that line. Well, Brandon Barnes has been announced. He's going to pinch hit for Paulson. So Diekman is pulled by Ryan Sandberg. And we'll sort it out for you when we come back. Runner at second, nobody out. Rockies down by three. Face Luis Garcia. Garcia threw two thirds of an inning on Monday. The Rockies did get a run against him. 21st appearance for Garcia. Well, with the 20 games prior to this one, he was tied for fourth in the National League in games appeared in. Fastball will be at 94 95. Slar slider will sit at 84. Barnes drives at center field. This will get the runner over to third. And Rosario. Moves up 90 feet. Barnes hit it well. And now with one out, Nick Huntley will come up. Get some high fives. He advanced the runner. Give Nick a chance to drive in the lead. Play the infield back so you hit a ground ball that'll get you the RBI sack fly many different ways. It's 
inside ball one Nick his last time up off the bat thought he hit a gapper to right center Huey and Herrera got over and made a leaping catch and turned it into an 8 3 double play because Paulson was running with the pitch off first and that's in there for a strike one and one and on that one when he hit it to right center field it had the backspin because he, he saw Herrera had to jump for it at the end to make the catch. And a called strike two so it's one and two. Looked like it was in. So Nick's got to go in battle mode here. Shorten up, put it in play. And that'll get the job done. So the Rockies get a run. Hunley on the ground out makes it four to two. Nick's 12th RBI of the season. What did he do? Just got it in play. Pass the pitcher, broke a bat. Puts it whittle the lead down to two. Much more manageable. That's why there's been such the heavy focus on the inordinate number of strikeouts the last seven ball games. Because those are guaranteed empty at bats. Yeah, and that was a four hopper to the shortstop. He didn't blister it. It was four hopper. He's out, but the run's in. It's kind of a team run with the, the bloop double. You take that and then the, the at bat by Brandon to get him over to third ground ball. May he won for two line to single to right his last time up takes inside one and one. If DJ were to reach Rafael he is on deck. Raffi Christian Friedrich in the bullpen. Two. Some more and more kids at the ballpark with school winding up. Graduations going on this week and next week. Plenty of those. This is in the air left center field. This one could be an adventure. Revere makes the catch. The Rockies get a run. Rosario scores it on the RBI ground out from Huntley. 4 2 going to the eighth.
Exchanger is brought to you by T-Mobile. In the third inning, it was already 2 nothing, and Ryan Howard leaned on that pitch from Eddie Butler and hit it over the center field wall. He's watched a lot of them sail out of many ballparks. Barnes stays in naturally in left field as he hit for Ben Paulson. Enoa comes in as a double switch. LeMahieu comes out, so Rafi will lead off next inning. And Christian Friedrich takes over on the hill. Three straight lefties out of the bullpen tonight for Walt Weiss. Butler gave him just three innings. Gave up all four runs, six hits, a couple walks, one intentional, two strikeouts. But Eddie threw 77 pitches in those three innings. Flande, two scoreless innings, didn't give up a hit. Kenny Roberts, two scoreless innings, allowed just one hit. So the pen has pitched well. It's kept the Rockies in this game. And Friedrich looking to do the same thing here in the eighth. And it's Odubel Herrera taking ball one. And Christian pitched on Monday night. Clean inning, gave up a hit in that ball game. 18th appearance now for Christian. Bouncer to third. Nolan's got it. And he throws across in time. One out. They get ready for the first fireworks show of the year on Friday, May 22nd. It's sponsored by Lockheed Martin. All on hand will receive a U.S. handheld flag. Tickets are going quickly, so get yours today at any Rockies ticket outlet, including Rockies.com. They won't actually be the, the root fireworks. Yeah, they'll be more like the traditional ones. Still have to figure out how they do that. I, I don't know. Carlos Ruiz, one strike on Ruiz with one out. Ruiz has a seven game hitting streak on the line. And that is a fair ball. So we've got an eight game right now. And then Cargo has to redirect to get to the baseball. And Ruiz will run the second with a stand up double. Always been able to hit the ball to the right side. Pitch hitting would be Darren Ruff. Ken Giles has been terrific. He's going to handle the eighth inning for Philadelphia. Friedrich will try to keep it a two run game. He's got Ruff. Nearly hit one out off the bench last night. Hit one to the wall. In fact, Rafael Enoa, who's now at second base, is playing left field. Made a nice running catch. We thought it might be out. Got under it too much, but he has the power. One for seven as a pinch hitter. Well, this is the big one for Christian Friedrich. It's not to diminish the abilities of the on deck hitter, Ben Revere, but Revere left on left, hitting just 205. Ruffs hitting 333 against lefties. Two and one. Well, and he has more power. Very rough does in yep. ben, ben Revere. You just got to run in the bottom of the seventh inning. You can't give one back.
three one and this ball's hit the center field Blackman right there. And that's the second out. The rough retired and that'll bring up Revere. Rockies in the eighth inning against Giles will have Enoa Blackman and Tulowitzki. Ben Revere last year hit his first career home run off a left hander it was against the Rockies. He hit it off of Boone Logan after 1,465 <laughs> career ABs. See, Huey, you were like Willie Stargell compared to Ben Revere. It didn't take me that long. It took me about five or six hundred my f before I hit my first one. This ball hard on the ground. LeMahieu, excuse me, he know with the backhand play. He made it look like LeMahieu. Nice job by Raphael Eno of the versatile one. He'll lead it off in the bottom of the eighth for two Philadelphia. Fan Friday's back. Tweet us your questions at Root Sports underscore RM. Use the hashtag Fan Friday for an opportunity to have your pictures and questions featured on air during Friday's ball game against the Giants. And I'll be hosting Fan Friday. How about that? Yeah. You knew, uh, wear a different hat on Friday yes, and I Saturday am. and yes, Sunday. And Sunday. Yeah, so you, I'm you, be become, you become well. the intrepid reporter. <laughs> Well, I don't know about that, but what I'm going to do, I think we're, we're going to have it. So we're going to ask your baseball questions in regard to maybe some tips or some drills that you want to do with your kids. Okay, that'll be good. Basketball from Giles misses. Ball one at 96. This right-hander's got a big arm, and he's been very good in the eighth inning, setting up Jonathan Papelbon. So the Rockies have their work cut out for them. Philly is 28 and 1 when you got Giles coming in with the lead followed by Papelbon. It's an uphill battle. Giles with his fastball. And he'll he'll touch triple digits. Who doesn't do that anymore? Well, there's a few guys left that don't. <laughs> One and two on Enoa. Got 98 there. Mm -hmm. 
Who wants tacos, fans? Follow at Root Sports underscore RM on Twitter to receive alerts for the Rockies taco special when the Rockies score seven in a game. Giles last year had a 118 ERA with the Phillies and 44 appearances. Struck out 64 and 45 and two thirds. Back up the middle. Oh my goodness, picked up by Galvis, but he will not be able to throw out Enoa. That was a wonderful play just to get to the baseball. But the Rockies have a leadoff single from Rafael Enoa. Good battle at the plate by Rafi. Really good. He had to battle. He fouled two pitches off that were just emergency swings and then sneaks one up the middle. Galvis with some range. He's lucky that big Ryan Howard can come off the bag and not allow that one to go into the dugout. The spin and the throw as he's in the in midair on the Subaru Super Bowl. So Ryan is left handed to get that ball. So here's Blackman Charlie one for two and he was hit by a pitch hit by a deep and 0 2 fastball. Blackman soft liner up Lee will grab it one out. That'll bring up to Lewinsky. Great numbers last 13 games against the Phillies 439 average three home runs 13 driven in tonight. He's 0 for 3. Cargo on deck Rockies down by two. Night, guys, they'll stand by the bat rack trying to warm up their hands with a heater. They're there down in the, the tunnel. You just hope that they don't go cold before you walk to the plate. See Nolan in the background, that's exactly what he's doing. Warm up the bat, warm up the batting gloves. One and one on Tulo. He's hop foul and he's going to get out of play. Ken Giles is a 24 year old who didn't grow up all that far from Denver. He's a New Mexico kid, born in Albuquerque. Went to high school at Rio Grande High. And then he went out to Yavapai in Arizona. The Rough Riders of Yavapai up in Prescott. We were talking about them the other day. It's a good baseball program, and he was drafted in the seventh round out of Yavapai. He probably played for Sky Smeltzer there. Has he been there a long time? That's a smash to Utley, and it turns into a 4 6 3 double play. That's all for the Rockies in the eighth inning. Four two.
runs in the first. They were unearned. And Big Ryan Howard hit a home run. Howard has a single and a double tonight as well. Willene Rosario, a couple hits tonight. 4 2 is our score. The Phillies by two, top of the ninth inning. And we check in with Jenny Kavnar out in center field. Jenny, you holding up okay? I'm holding up. It is 39 degrees. It has officially fallen below 40. I can see my breath. We should be skiing. But we're watching baseball. That's okay. Coming up in the Toyota Post Game Show, we will recap what you just said. Eddie Butler giving up all four of those runs, three of them earned. We will also get you inside the clubhouse. It's coming up right after baseball. And hopefully, I'm not frozen hey, by that, Drew. Jenny, speaking of speaking of skiing, you could go to A base and it's still open. It's They've still got 44 open. inches of snow this last week. We're not doing TV tomorrow. Maybe we should head up there. <laughs> I'm too, ready. It's too cold to ski. <laughs> <laughs> and I love skiing. All right, Christian Friedrich, second inning of work, trying to keep it a two-run game, see if the Rockies can get after Jonathan Papelbon. Freddie Galvis, Chase Utley, Ryan Howard. You have the switch hitter Galvis and then a couple left handers after that. Chance for Christian to also work multiple innings. Galvis hitting 517 right handed. The Little League average. 15 for 29. Ball and a strike. Rocky's bullpen has done a marvelous job throwing up zeros. All four runs occurred while Eddie Butler was in the ball game. That's the first out of the ninth inning. To answer your question a, a moment ago that you asked, Sky Smeltzer is no longer the coach at Yavapai. He was there for 12, 14 years, and he stepped down a couple years ago. Okay. Your old coach at Glendale, is he still He's there? still there. He's shooting for win number 1,000 in the junior college ranks. That's a lot of baseball yes, games. Yes, it is. Utley is single, a fly ball to deep center, a walk. And a ground ball to second. I was watching Miami and Virginia this afternoon in college baseball. Did you see any of that? I, I missed that one. Jason Hayward's little brother is playing left field for the University of Miami. Off the end of the bat. Well, you have those foul. conference tournaments starting up. Then you'll have the regionals and the super regionals culminating with that elusive trip to Omaha that every club or every college shoots for. Hey, what? Philly's excited because Santa Barbara is going to be a tough out. This is a ground ball hunting the middle of the diamond. And it's on through for a base hit for Utley, his second of the night. This is the third hit allowed by the Rockies bullpen. First six hits came against Eddie Butler. This copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Colorado Rockies may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Colorado Rockies. So Ryan Howard, single home run, robbed of a base hit on a terrific play by D.J. LeMayhew. And then a double down the right field line. So he's had a big night. But he's also a double play candidate. Howard, after a real slow start to the season, hitting 382 his last 16 ball games, including four home runs. for two in his career against Christian. Jane was talking about skiing. Ryan's batting gloves look like ski gloves. <laughs> Got some neon on them. Good pitch. 
Hey, what Roberts broke off some curveballs. Christian Friedrich's broken off a couple curveballs. You can throw him here. I mean, that's that's a misnomer that you know, you can't throw a curveball at altitude. You have to spin it more, but you also have to set your sights differently. Fastball at 91 off the plate. See if that's a setup for another curveball. Rockies have the shift on with Howard. Had the uh, sound bite was Renee Latchman talking about how valuable Nick's been and you know, came into ball game hitting over 300. The big home run last night. He's knocking guys in from the bottom third of the lineup. Just one pass ball, also, and just one air. So I mean, he's doing everything that you would want. Also throwing out 26 percent of would-be base dealers. Howard swings and misses. So Friedrich strikes out Ryan Howard for the second out tonight. And that'll bring up Michael Franco. Went all over the map with Ryan. He went fastball. He went curveball. But on the Subaru Supermo, you see the red dot on the baseball. That's the slider. Ball for a strike. The Papel bond loosening in the Phillies bullpen. The Rockies left Cargo, Arenado, and Rosario. Barnes after that. Two outs at first base is Utley. One and one on Michael Franco, the rookie third baseman. On the inside, two and one. 21,714 have braved the elements tonight. Day game tomorrow, no television. Right back at Christian. One way to catch it. You know what? He did a terrific job after Roberts did a terrific job for two innings. Blonde for two innings. All the lefties. So here we go. Bottom of the ninth. Rocky down by two.
Baseball Live Root Sports is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. By Mike Shaw, Subaru, always our lowest price in sales and service guaranteed. And by the Colorado Lottery, expect the unexpected. It is 4-2, the Rockies trailing the Phillies in game three of a four-game set. 3-4-5 for the Rockies. Cargo will lead it off against Jonathan Papelbon. 116 career saves in a Phillies uniform. He recently passed the former Rocky, Jose Mesa, on their all-time list. Mesa saved 112 games. Steve Pedrosian is third. Mitch Williams, wild thing, fourth on that list. And Cherry Creek's Brad Lidge, fifth on the all-time Phillies saves list with 100. So here we go, ninth inning. A shift is on for Cargo. He drove in a run with a fourth inning single, one for three. A quality swing there on a 90 mile an hour fastball, right over the heart of the plate. Applebaum 10 for 10 and saves. That's tied for first in the National League. And the 10 saves are also tied for sixth. The perfect time to kick one. Big bouncer to short, excuse me, to third. Actually towards second, but the third baseman's fielding it. You know what I mean. It's scored 5-3. There's one out, and that'll bring up Arenado. Now, Franco will move back over to a normal third baseman position. Nolan tonight 0 for 3. for four last night hit loose in his last eight at bats going back to Monday night Rockies have been out hit nine to seven this evening Papelbon doesn't have the, the fastball that he once had. He still will go after hitters. He's not afraid to use his, his fastball. This is 90. He used to be mid to upper 90s. Because of his body angle, he's, he starts so close. Probably a little more difficult to pick up the baseball right on right. Well, and a very violent delivery. He's closed off. He's hiding the ball behind his body. Drops the arm down, and then it's tough to pick up. Oh, he's shaking his head. Can I have that pitch back? Up and away. Chance for me to extend my arms. Court and Papelbon, how they are, where they're 95, but you have swings that are late because you just don't see it. 2 2. He went change up and he strikes out Arenado. Rockies down to their last out, nobody on, and we're Lee Rosario, who's two for three, single and a double, will come up. Trying to save an opportunity for Brandon Barnes. Strike on Willeen. Oh, 
Lima is sitting on the slider. Oh, and two. Him out, and that's the ball game. A one, two, three, ninth for Papelbon, his 11th save of the year, and the Phillies win it four to two on a night where the temperatures sank to the 30s. Gonzalez.